Hey Tabernacle friends, today we get to talk about something special. We get to talk about being children of God, being part of God's family. But we need to make sure that we're looking up verses and digging into our Bibles today. So if you don't have your Bible, go ahead and pause the video and get it now. All right, do you have your Bible? We are going to be in the book of 1 John. It's the book that has one, the number one, then John, and it's found near the end. So go ahead and find that. If you need to pause, do that. All right, friends, so we're going to go to the end of chapter 2. So I want you to find the big 2 and go all the way until you find the little 28, verse 28. And I want you to follow along in your Bibles as we have a fifth grader read it for us. So follow along with your eyes as we listen to Heidi. Here we go. First John 2, 28 says, So now, little children, remain in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed for him at his coming. All right, so Heidi read verse 28. And in verse 28, the Bible says, So now, little children, remain in him. Well, remain, what does that mean? Well, it can mean stay connected. Do you remember last week how we talked about the vine and the branches? And we talked about how we needed to stay connected to Jesus. We also had a lamp that had to stay connected to the power source. We had to plug it in to make it work, right? And so we need to stay connected. So this verse says something that we've already heard before. We heard it in last week's lesson. But I tell you what, when the Bible repeats something over and over again, it means it's important. So I am proud of you for watching this video and pulling out your Bibles because you are staying connected. You are remaining in him, as this verse says. So I want you to skip down to chapter 3, and we're going to go to verse 1. And Dane is going to read verse 1 for us, so follow along in your Bibles as he reads. See what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children. All right, so verse 1 has two parts that we're going to talk about today. The first part says, see what great love the Father has given us. That's the first part. That we should be called God's children is the second part we're going to talk about. So let's talk about that first part. See what great love the Father has given us. Do you know that God loves you so very much? He loves you more than your parents love you, more than anybody can love you. And that's hard for us to understand. But God's love is a perfect love. It's a holy love. And we can trust in him. And he wants to do whatever is best for us. He wants to help us. And that is why he made a way for us to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus. Sometimes there are people that say they love us and they aren't nice to us. There are people that say they're their friend, our friends and they aren't kind to us. But God is not like that. So don't judge God's love based on someone else's love because God's love is perfect. Let's look at the second part of that verse. It says that we should be called God's children. That's a great verse. So we're going to go to another verse that also talks about being a child of God. So we're going to move to the book of John. We were in 1 John, but now we're going to move to the book of John chapter 1. So if you need to pause the video while you find it, go ahead and do that. All right, did you find the book of John? It's part of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're going to be in chapter 1, verse 12. All right, and what I'd like you to do is I want you to follow along in verse 12 while our fifth grader, Ava, reads it for us. Hi, today I'm going to be reading John 1, 12. It says, but to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe his name. All right, verse 12 tells us a lot of things, and it's sort of like what we just read in 1 John. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God. That means being part of God's family. And it continues, it says, to those who believe in his name. What does that mean? Well, we're talking about having a relationship with God through Jesus. And how do we do that? Well, we have to realize that we are sinners and that we are separated from God through our sin. But God made a way, because he loves us, for us to be connected to him when we put our faith and trust in Jesus. We make Jesus our boss, the Lord of our lives. And we also ask him to be our savior because he alone paid the price for our sin. 
He did it once and for all. And when we realize these things, then we can become a Christian, a follower of Jesus. So let's look at another verse that talks about it a little more. We're in the book of John. Now let's go to chapter 3. We were in chapter 1. And when you find chapter 3, I want you to find verse 16. This is probably a very familiar verse to most of you because we talk about it a lot. So let's go ahead and we're going to listen to a fifth grader, Ansley, read John 3, 16. Follow along in your Bibles. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. All right. So John 3, 16 says, For God loved the world. Friends, God loves you. You are part of the world. And you know what? Sometimes we think that, no, there's no way God can love us if he really knew what we thought or what we did. But guess what? God knows those things, and he loves you no matter what. The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So because God loves you, let's see what he did. He said he loves us in this way, that he gave his one and only son, that's Jesus, so that everyone Everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Wow, eternal life, that's forever with God. That's being in a right relationship with God forever. It doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, then the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you, and he is perfect, right? And so we have this guidance. We have this counselor who's going to help us. So friends, if you have any questions about making a decision to follow Christ, I want you to ask your parents. Your parents can call me if they have any questions too. But you know what? I want you to ask some questions. And that's going to start you on that path. And at some point, the Holy Spirit's going to let you know when it's time to make the decision. It may not be today, and that's okay. But when that time comes, I want you to say yes to following Jesus. And then you will become part of the family of God. And that's a forever relationship with a holy, perfect, loving God. And that's what he wants. All right, friends? So today we've been talking about being children of God and being in the family of God. So I have a fun little activity I want to show you. We are going to work together to make these little paper people that are connected like a family. And all it takes is a pair of scissors, a piece of paper, and a pencil. So go ahead and pause the video right now where you go get those three things, scissors, paper, and pencil. All right, so follow along with these steps. If I go a little too fast for you, it's okay because you can always pause the video and finish the step before moving on to the next one. All right, so we're going to start with our piece of paper and we're going to fold it hot dog style, which means up and down, just like this. All right, so we're just gonna fold it. And the whole purpose of that is just to cut a sheet of paper. And so after you fold it, you're going to cut it so you have one long strip of paper. All right, so you just cut down the middle. It doesn't have to be too exact. All right, so I have my sheet of paper. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it in half. Pretty easy, right? We just folded it in half. And so I want you to notice that we have a folded side and an open side because we don't want to get the two sides confused because we're going to continue to fold, all right? So go ahead and fold it one more time. All right, see what I did? And then fold it even one more time after that. All right, so I have my piece of paper. You don't need to un open, open it up, but this is what it would look like when it's all opened up. So we have it folded in half, folded in half, folded in half. So I'm aware which side is open and which side has all the folds because then I need to draw a little person on it. And the shape that I'm going to draw is sort of a half of a person like this, okay? And it's really important that the arms and the feet go all the way to the open side, that part that wasn't folded every single piece, because otherwise your people won't be connected and there'll be social distancing. But we want our people to be connected because we're talking about being in the family of God. All right, so I have my piece of paper that's folded. Here's the open side and here's the completely folded side. And I'm going to draw 
on it that half of a person. So on the folded side is where you draw the head. You don't wanna make the head too big because remember, it's only half of a circle. And you draw the neck and you draw the arms and the arms have to go all the way down to the other side. So look what mine looks like. Can you see that? So I have half a head and then the arms go all the way over here and the feet have to go all the way over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut along those lines and then when I unfold it, I'm gonna have my family of God. So again, if I cut faster than you, you can always pause the video while you work on it. And you know what? It's okay if you don't quite cut on the pencil lines because this is just gonna be only on one little part of it and you can always make that the back of the paper. All right, and you'll be able to have fun with this and you can use different color paper. You could use lots of them and string them together. You could have lots of fun with it. You could even take this when you finish and write one of our Bible verses on it. Wouldn't it be nice since we have talked about John 3.16? So here's my finished one. All right, and so then all I do is I unfold it. I have one person. I unfold it again. I have two. And then I unfold it and look, I have four little people. Isn't that fun? And so this just helps us remember that when we make that decision to follow Jesus, we make him our Lord and Savior, then we are called children of God and we are part of his family. So we have our little family here. Enjoy this activity. Hey, if you make it, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Today, it's been really fun talking to you and digging into God's Word. I love opening the Bible. I love reading all that God has to tell us. I love thinking about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us by dying on the cross. Today, we talked about the verse John 3.16, and we have this great song called, Why Don't You? It's a really fun song that we do a lot of times in kids' worship, and it teaches John 3.16. So before we go, I want to go through those movements so that when you do that song today, you can remember it, and you can use that song to make sure you have really hidden God's Word in your heart. If you don't know where the song is, your parents can find it. There's a link attached to this activity um, where they found this video. They can find the link to the song, so I hope you enjoy it. But we start out by doing our I Love You hands, and we're going to push down twice and say, for God loved the world and this way he gave his one and only son so that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is good news and I want you to hide that word in your heart. It's been fun being with you today. I can't wait to see you in person. I think it's going to happen sooner than later, which is exciting. But until then, you keep reading God's word, keep praying, and I want you to worship with Pastor Patrick and listen to a sermon today. All right? I love you all. See you soon. Bye.